see uh, as we contemplated that there will be uh, fracture see the root piece has been removed completely and there is a 90 degree dilation present on uh, to it so there was fracture of the tuberosity uh, because it's a dried skull even if it was in patient it would fracture anyway so that is not the problem uh, still we can go ahead and place the implant okay the thing which is to be understood that if we see the normal arch curvature you see the normal arch curvature and follow a straight line it goes like this mm. that means there is no way we are engaging the pterygoid plates mm. if we go follow the arch you see here also we are missing out okay mm. so what is the technique the technique is to angulate the drill in such a way that our drill hits the pterygoid plate this is the fusion zone as you can see you see there is a depression mm. the fusion zone is there Mm. Okay, and uh, here there are three bones fusing actually. Uh, this is the maxillary tuberosity area. Mm. This area, this triangular area, mm. which is uh, some part of is along with the tuberosity has fractured, mm. is the pyramidal process of the palatine bone. Mm. Pyramidal process of the palatine bone, and this is uh, the pterygoid plates are itself from the sphenoid bone. So these three bones. the tuberosity the pyramidal process of the palatine bone and the sphenoid bone okay mm. the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone merge in this area mm. this teardrop shape which you are seeing here this teardrop shape which you are seeing here is the pterygomaxillary fossa mm. and it follows the pterygomaxillary fissure mm. okay mm. so that is we are not going over there but this is uh, an important anatomical restriction for pterygoid implants so the reason i want to highlight this area is because our implant should never be angulated like this straight towards the pterygomaxillary uh, fissure if i point it like this you can see we will never engage into the pterygoid fossa okay our target zone is this area this depression area between the two pterygoid plates slightly angulated towards the medial side so that means naturally if i want to enter my engage my implant into this site i have to tilt my drill from this direction to this direction mm. and see now we are perfectly falling within the realm of pterygoid mm. fossa okay mm. so this is uh, this is a very important consideration another important consideration is the is this part uh, if we go to see uh, if i insert my probe in the greater palatine canal you see uh, the probe is exiting from the uh, inner side okay this is the point can you see can you uh, appreciate the probe can you appreciate the probe yes yeah okay this is the point where the descending palatine artery is coming this area and this area is known as again a dehiscence we read in perio okay there are two types of bone loss around the teeth okay a complete window formation that is a uh, dehiscence or another one with the margin which is fenestration so this is a dehiscence. bony dehiscence because we can see the whole window of the bone mm -hmm. and the, we can appreciate the probe mm -hmm. we can appreciate the probe present within the mm -hmm. uh, dehiscence okay mm -hmm. so this is the path where uh, the descending palatine artery is coming downwards okay mm -hmm. so this becomes a very tricky thing why because here is the descending palatine artery coming down and here we are engaging the implant mm -hmm. so that means we are very much close to the descending palatine mm -hmm. artery so take uh, care has to be taken that we should not angulate the implant excessively mm -hmm. while going upwards mm -hmm. we should keep bare minimum not much this for say this is the straight line mm -hmm. okay if we tilt our implant tend to uh, our drill tend to 15 degree mm -hmm. we are within the safe margins of pterygoid fossa so that we can place the implant mm. the moment we tilt it more mm. like 30 degree mm. we are going towards the uh, dehiscence and the thing why i am talking about this dehiscence because this dehiscence is very common mm -hmm. how common 80% mm. see this is my skull i i i i own this skull mm. and i have found a dehiscence on both the sides mm. if i try to enter see again the probe is coming out mm -hmm. that means and 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 it is going within the uh, descent see 
the whole probe has disappeared mm -hmm. the whole probe can you see mm -hmm. the whole probe has disappeared mm -hmm. it is the path where from where the descending palatine artery is mm -hmm. coming out okay so we we need to be very careful about this thing so let's move ahead and proceed with uh, drilling and uh, uh, since this is a dried human skull a very old maybe okay there are chances that the due to the torquing forces there might be more uh, crumpling or fracture of the plates uh, so we are mentally prepared for that but that is how the learning goes okay so let's go so here is the woodpecker implanter x uh, you can see 40000 rpm uh, gear is 1 is to 1 okay we can change the gear ratio but uh, since we are trying to drill into dense cortical bone uh, we usually prefer 1 is to 1 ratio there are various ratios you can choose as per your uh, site uh, design of implant bone density and all okay we can change the speed uh, this is a dried human skull so i don't think uh, 40000 rpm will be needed uh, 30000 rpm uh, will be sufficient okay so is to drill the way the patient is so drilling should be performed the uh, for say this is our patient okay and uh, we are trying to place uh, the pterygoid implant okay the idea is to drill uh, i could just reverse it and do it will be very easy for me to do it yeah we are already have achieved our desired area of penetration and uh, as you can see the drill is there it's if you can appreciate it you can see the drill see this is the d2 i am talking about we need to stop okay uh, things are easier on the patient okay uh, but uh, since the skull is a very dry kind of skull uh, we need not to force it too much all we need to do it is uh, take a relevant or uh, one more thing uh, the thing which are to be noticed is that how to select the implant size okay how how to select the implant size okay yeah if you can see the drill is in the pterygoid fossa between the two pterygoid plates and directly directed towards the medial pterygoid as i was explaining am i uh, clear on that yeah yeah it is very much clear now okay so now at this point where i got my d2 okay i'll just take out my drill i'll just take out my drill okay and i will measure it with a scale we can also want if you want uh, we can take an x ray to see how uh, the things have gone uh, how the area of penetration is so this is our marking spot this is our marking spot okay now i have taken out the drill i'll just take a scale okay and i'll see the uh, here the length uh, stands out to be 22 mm okay the length stands out to be 22 mm so uh, we have multiple dummy implants um this uh, implants length uh, the implant length is measured from the neck from this portion actually the length of the basal implant is measured from this point from this point this particular point so uh, we are supposed to engage an implant which is 22 mm long and this precisely fits our requirement i was just not sure that this is 22 mm because these are dummy implants these are out of box we don't know their exact diameter and length but still uh, i was lucky enough to pick the right size now what has to be done the same path which i have created i will take that path and i will try to now see the strength of the implant just few threads going inside and you see the implant is holding the weight of the skull this is just two threads two threads going inside this is the kind of anchorage 
we get in pterygoid implants. It's holding, pretty much holding, right? And we will just tighten it till the extent what? Till the neck portion of the implant match merges with the soft tissue. Okay. The neck portion of the implant has merged with the soft tissue and I'll just remove it. This is a perfect way to see and if you see, we are exactly within the pterygoid plate. Uh, we'll just take a explorer so that you can appreciate it in a better way. You see, you see the implant strut jutting out right in there and the importance of pterygoid implants why we are doing pterygoid implants is because many a times we don't have bone in this area okay so this pterygoid implant uh, will give us anchorage for preventing cantilever forces and full span constructions can be done here uh, I would not say advise to bend the implant because uh, as I told you earlier uh, due to the dryness of the skull, uh, we already had a, a tuberosity fracture. So, if we try to bend it, uh, the implant will uh, come out and this whole assembly will fall out. But this is a very uh, beautifully done okay, uh, and clearly crisp thing which is to be appreciated. If uh, this uh, plate was existent, the plate which is now in the kidney tray, if this plate was existent okay that would have given us the opportunity to bend the implant okay. thank you so much